mentioned how Terrence Crawford's contract runs through even after his career is over, so, which prevents him from possibly fighting all these uh, welterweights at BBC. What's your take on that? With the contract situation, mm. it might prevent him fighting the Spencers of the world? I hope not. Okay. But, mm, we'll see. Yeah. Terrence Crawford yeah. went where he took, where he felt was best for his career, and uh, that it was with uh, the re-signing with top rank. You know, there was a moment where you know, he was a free agent. So if he went with top rank, then you hope that top rank and PBC can make an agreement to make these big fights. You know, um, because at the end of the day, you know, we all want to see them, and I'm sure Terrence wants to see them as well. But. <laughs> You know who you signed with, and of course they are taking care of you, they're, it's a, they're a strong team, they take care of their fighters, but at day's end, if these are the fights you want to make, people are going to have to come together and hopefully, um, um, you know, be able to make it. It's yeah. not like when you're on the same side of the street, you know, so either those guys have to be on one side or he has to come to the other side, whatever it is, one, one or the other, or both sides have to come to an agreement, you know. And so well, that's not a guarantee. You're talking, you know, we're talking about the agreement that both sides come and play, right? Let's say it doesn't happen. Does, will he do what Miguel Cole done, Oscar De La Hoya done, when they were top ranked? They were um, not pleased with the route they were going in the direction. You think no, you can't. You can't okay. say that because okay. he chose to resign with them. Okay. You know, there was a t when he resigned with top rank. It was uh, it was already kind of out there that people wanted to see the Spence fight. He wasn't like an unknown commodity. He was already relatively known, and he still resigned with Top Rank. So you can't. I don't think you can blame Top Rank for that. No. I, no. No. I don't think. I think. I think there's two A sides. I don't think there's a B side with that. I don't, I don't think Crawford should have to diminish himself to be the A side. You know. As a matter of fact, I think that's why Tyson Fury went to Top Rank instead of just doing the immediate rematch with with Wilder. First of all, if he would have got the decision he deserved, the rematch would have had automatically because it was a re rematch clause in the contract. So once it once the fight was declared a draw, Tyson Fury didn't have to give him a rematch right away. But he said, you know what? I didn't get this. I got this unlucky decision because I don't have a, a team that's strong enough for me. Let me go get myself with a powerful team. That way I have some protection on the outside of the ring. So I think the reason you sign with strong teams like PBC, like uh, Matchroom, like, like Top Rank, uh, is so you don't have to be the B side in these power matchups, you know? Uh, maybe it's like a two A side type of situation, you know? And uh, I think that's what Fury did. So that now you have a co promotion go involved. And I think that's what um, the situation Crawford wants to find himself in as well. I don't think Crawford should have to be a B side or even want to be a B side. I think uh, him and Spence are both A sides and they should and then if the teams come together they should be they should be marketed and made similar to what Fury and Wilder two is gonna be. Paulie, right now, great year of boxing, a lot of great knockouts for you. Which one's the best knockout of the year? Closing out twenty nineteen. I don't know, man. You guys put me on the spot with these questions. That's the best part, man. I know, but like there's so many fights that are you know, yeah, that was a good knockout while the Brazil for sure. That's all. That's that's part of it. You know. Yo, what's up, Tim? <laughs> baby. Yeah. Good to see you, man. How are you? Too. Yeah. Bless, man. Bless. Um, I don't know. I have to. You know, we're in December. There's probably so many fights I'm not even thinking about right now. You know, it was a lot of good knockouts this year. You know, and there's obviously, you know, see, knockouts of the year, upsets of the year. Like if people ask me these questions, you have to go rewind your mind through so many fights. I will not remember right now. In your, in your, like, in, as long as you've been in boxing, is the politics the worst right now that you've witnessed? Um, it's hard to say. I don't know because I didn't understand the politics as good as as well as I do now. Um, even until the second half of my career, even the first half of my career. I still didn't understand the politics. I just wanted to fight and thought like, okay, let me just try to get what I can get and let me try to fight it. Let me just call this guy's name, call this guy's name. And it's not that easy, you know? Um, so I didn't start to understand those politics until the second half of my career, which means I didn't understand it in my lifetime, even before boxing, obviously when I was a kid and obviously during the first part of my career. So I can't say this is the worst I've ever seen the politics because I only started to understand the politics of boxing probably in the last 10 years. So in a matter